Welcome to the second video in this web scraping series, where we will show you everything about web scraping, from how to collect data, how to store it, and even how to avoid getting blocked. In part one, we learned a little bit about the basics of scraping with Python, and we built our first Python scraper. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to check it out. In this part, we're going to focus on using data classes and data pipelines, as they are the most powerful options available in Beautiful Soup to structure and process data. So to get started, we will import data class from the data classes module, along with field, fields, initver, and as dict. We will then define our data class with the at data class decorator. We will then call our data class product, and then we will start giving our data class some fields. Firstly, the field name, which is of type string, then the field price string, which is of type initver, and initver is used to create fields that are only used during object initialization and are not included in the final data class instance. So we can use that to get the GB price and the US dollars price. So we will define those two, price GB, which is a float, and price USD, which is also a float. So by passing init false to these fields, it means that they will not be included in the default constructor generated by the data class. So they won't be included in the initialization process because we are going to generate them ourselves. Then a field URL, which is of type string. Then we're going to define a post init function. And the post init function is a method that allows for additional processing after initializing the object. So in here, we're going to clean some of the data and also derive attributes like name, price GB, price USD, etc. So we will define these values. And for each one, we will call a function to derive that value. Right now, these functions don't exist, but we will fill them in shortly. So we will start laying out our code and creating these functions, the ones that are mentioned above in the post init function. So we will define clean name, clean price, convert price to US dollars, create absolute URL, and then we will start going through these functions and getting the values for them. So for clean price, we will take the price string and strip out any space, and then we will replace the string sale price with a blank string. If the price contains sale price from, we will also replace that. If the price string is empty, then we'll just return zero because there is no price string. However, if there is, then we will just return the price string converted to a float. For converting the price to US dollars, we will just take the price GB and multiply it by some constant value, 1.21, which is indicative of the exchange rate for US dollars. For cleaning the name, we'll first check to see if the name is empty. If it is, we'll return missing. If it's not, then we will just return name with strip to strip out some of the space. We will then fill in the create absolute URL function. Again, if the URL is empty, we will return missing. However, if it has a value, we will return the chocolate.co.uk domain and append the URL to the end. Now we can define an instance of our data class in our main function. We can give it a name a price string, and a URL.
and we can simply print this object to make it show up in the terminal. So now that we have a data class, we're going to create a data pipeline. And the data pipeline will help us to pass the data from various pipelines for processing and then finally stored in the CSV. For example, we're going to check and see if there are duplicates and then pass it to a CSV file. So to get started with that, we will define a class called product data pipeline. And then we will create a constructor that takes a CSV file name and a storage queue limit with a default value of five. We will define a name scene list, which is used for checking for duplicates. We will define a storage queue value, which holds products temporarily until a specific storage limit is reached. We will define a storage queue limit, which is a variable that defines the maximum number of products that can reside in the storage queue. We will define the CSV file name, and we will also define a Boolean called CSV file open which will track whether or not the file is open or closed. We will then start laying out our class by defining some of the methods we will need. Save to CSV for periodically saving the products to a CSV file. Clean raw product to clean the scraped data and return a product object. Is duplicate, which checks if a product is a duplicate based on its name. Add product, which adds a product to the pipeline after cleaning and checks for duplicates before storing, and triggers saving to the CSV file if necessary. And then finally, close pipeline. So for clean raw product, all we have to do is return a data class instance. Scrape data is a dictionary, so all we have to do to get the name is do get name. For price, it's the same. We will just say scrape data dot get price and the same for the URL scrape data dot get URL you can see for each one we're giving a blank string as a second argument that's just giving a default if the value doesn't exist for add product we will call the clean raw product method with the scrape data passed as an argument and if the product isn't a duplicate i.e. we haven't seen it before We will call self.storageQueue.append to append it to the storage queue. And if the length of the storage queue is greater than or equal to the storage queue limit, i.e. it's greater than or equal to 5, and the file is closed, we want to trigger a save to CSV. For is duplicate, we're just going to take the product data dot name and check to see if it's in the name scene list. If it is, we'll just print duplicate item found and the name of the product. We will then return true because it is a duplicate. And if it's not, then we will just append the product name to that list and return false. So before writing our save to CSV function, we need to import two other modules into the project. First of all, we need to import OS and then we need to import time. So to save to CSV, we want to first set that the CSV file is open. We're going to define a list called products to save and we're going to extend that list with what's in the storage queue currently. So we're copying what's in the storage queue and putting it in products to save. We're then going to clear the storage queue. If there's no products to save, i.e. the list is empty, we will then get the keys that we can then use for the header row in the CSV file. This will just be the fields on the data class item at index zero. And then we're going to check to see if the file exists by using the imported OS module. So we're checking to see if there's a file with that name and also if it has a size greater than zero.
We're then going to open the CSV file in append mode, which means that if the file doesn't exist, it will be created. And if it does, it'll be appended to. We'll set the encoding to UTF-8. And we will create a dict writer instance, which takes the output file and the field names, which is equal to the keys that we defined above. If the file doesn't exist, we want to write the header, which will be the keys that we defined above. And then we want to iterate over each product in the products to save list. And we want to write the row as a dictionary. Then we want to set CSV file open to false. So to test our data pipeline, we will come back down to our main function and create an instance of the data pipeline. We will pass in a CSV file name, which in our case is productData.csv. And then just for this example, we will create some dummy data that we will pass into the product data pipeline by calling add product. After adding three products, we will then call data pipeline dot close pipeline. In the close pipeline function, we will just check and see if the CSV file is open. If it is, we will sleep for three seconds. Then if the storage queue is greater than zero, it means that there's still stuff in the storage queue and it needs to be saved to the CSV file, which we will do by calling self.save to CSV. Now when we run the script in the terminal, you will see that a new file called productdata.csv is created and inside is all of the cleaned data that we just inserted. So that's everything we're going to cover in this part. We hope you've gained a solid understanding about data classes, data pipelines, and periodic saving to CSV files. If you have any questions, please leave them below. In part three, we'll work on storing our data. We will try some different storage types like JSON, S3 buckets, and even databases. Make sure to check out that video. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.